did not win Miss America. But I married her boyfriend. She can have that old tacky rhinestone crown, honey. I got the ring. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. playing me for three years on Comedy 97. I wanted to go to college. I took my PSAT, made the lowest score in the class. My SAT, three times lowest score in the class. I took the ACT, it went lower. I applied to Clemson, they did not let me in. That admissions director, I got sassy. I got sassy. He said, does your daddy have any pull? I said, yeah, he's got a brand new 40, 20 John Deere. What else you want? <laughs> that didn't work either. I couldn't get in. Nobody wanted me. SATs were everything back then. But there was one school in Columbia and it wasn't Carolina. They said, maybe. We want to interview you. I said, I can do this. I drove to Columbia. I felt sorry for that man. I wore him down into the nub of the carpet until he let me in. I'm telling you, I begged that school. I said, you do not know what's inside of me. Please, please, please. How many of y'all remember the movie Mulan? My favorite line in one of the songs. When will my reflection show? Who I am inside. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah. They let me in on academic probation. That's good. I remember going to that tomato field, jumping over the tomato steaks and going, Daddy, Daddy, I got in. He said, I can't send you. I had a bad year on the farm. I said, plant some cabbage. Cabbage worked for us. I don't know why. Well, I want you to know, I went to Columbia College on cucumber rebate money, prayer, cabbage, and a grant. Don't ever let someone tell you no, you think next. You think next. I started on academic probation, but I graduated, I was on the dean's list. <laughs> have futures and even as adults y'all there was a time in my life I was married a while and my husband Thomas and I decided we'd start a family as we say in the south that dog didn't hunt point or get off the porch it just wasn't working it wasn't happening and I had to go to all this treatment and I was all oh I can't have babies oh this is bad my future's messed up I was so sad I got the really bad news coinciding with my very first day working in the family stockyard. We had two stockyards. And I was so down the dumps, I didn't like me. My future was messed up. The doctor said, you will not be a mother. So I walked in the stockyard. And there's a cattle buyer. I thought he had a tumor. It turned out to be a red man. <laughs> Toothpicks on this side, I wanted to say, have you seen yourself today? Just curious. He looked at me and he asked me that horrible question. Hey, you got any chaps? <gasps> I thought, I'm not giving him my chapstick. I'll get cooties on my lips. <laughs> I said, what? He said, hey, chaps, you know, children. I went, I can't have children. And I proceeded to tell him my entire reproductive history. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
He just stared at me. He said, you ain't got no chaps. I went, no. He said, well, if you was my heifer. I would have done drove you to the meat processing plant. I said, honey, if I was your heifer, I'd drive myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have given birth to two children. Yes. My oldest son's name Holmes, he's at Clemson. My daughter's Caroline, she's precious. She really is. She's on point. She is on point. My son is not. He's getting there, but he makes me laugh. And you know what I've learned about these kids? Do not friend them on Facebook. I don't want to see what they're up to. So Uncle Stanley calls my husband's uh, brother, my brother-in-law, and he says, y'all better see what Holmes putting up on Facebook. <laughs> I said, well, I'm not his friend. And Stanley said, I might not have him as my friend neither. So he read it to me. Here's what my son put. When I was very, very young, I felt like a man trapped in a woman's body. <laughs> oh, oh, that's nice. I can't wait for your daddy to see this. I called him, I said, Holmes, what is this? Felt like a man trapped in a woman's body. He said, oh, Uncle Stanley didn't read the next line, Mama. And then I was born. <laughs> Thank you, son, really. <laughs> Children are just a source of laughter. But you gotta find it. And sometimes you gotta really dig to find it, don't you? You do. She moved our audience from laughter to tears and was able to make a significant difference to our business growth. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. The future belongs to you. She was one of the best speakers that I have heard in a long time. Sir. Don't let anybody tell you no. Don't let them do that to you. I just love to look for humor in different places. See, that's I think is a pearl we should all have on our strand of pearls. My school teacher friends, I just love them. I was sitting by one of them a couple of weeks ago and I said, hey Deborah, you got something cute for me? She said, oh yeah, Jane, I do. She said, I was substitute teaching. And I walked in that little classroom of kindergarten kids and I said, boys and girls, I am your substitute teacher. One little girl started jumping up and down and she went to the reading lab to see a mutual friend of ours and she said, guess what? Our real teacher's sick, but we got a prostitute teacher. <laughs> I think humor is everywhere. Humor is everywhere. And when I think about our strand and the strand that we should wear every day, I think it should be such an eclectic blend of life. You know those little seed pearls, the little small decisions we make, the irregular pearls are weird stuff that happens that we have to learn to laugh and have a good attitude and a good sense of humor about. And the dark pearl, we don't like that dark pearl, but let me tell you, that can be a treasure to define who you are. And you know what starts the pearl? The piece of sand, the grain of sand. It's an irritant. See, I think irritants are good because it defines who you are. So you were you were Miss back in the day. Yeah, back in the day. And since then, you have uh, you've kind of taken uh, some life lessons and put them in a few books, and you're on yeah. TV and XM and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's been great. It's been great. I just keep trying to do different things. That is my heart. On sale right now on Amazon for just a couple of days. A very good right. buy. Give it to your friends. It will help them. Is this going to it change will. my life? Yeah, it will change your life. I love some yes. of the, the titles yes. are fantastic. Yes, you have well. to learn. You have to learn to laugh at yourself because I'm a humorist, mm -hmm. and the first person you need to laugh at is yourself. And if you can't do that, that's sad. You have to have. You have to like you. Sure. You have to take care of you. All right, Jane Hurlong. The book is uh, "Bury Me with My Pearls." Bestseller. On. Bestseller. Say that. Be bestselling. Bestseller. Future bestselling book. No, it is right now. Right now it is. Yeah, it's been oh, that it's way for about a month. Oh, we'll get out of town. All right, best-selling yeah. author. Yeah. Jane Herlong, details for you at watch.com. Bear me my pearls on life lessons and uh, putting uh, humor with a spiritual twist on it. Go to Amazon. My love, that is fantastic. Latest day off the ladders today. That's a lesson we've learned from Miss <laughs> Jane Herlong. <laughs>
<laughs> Stick around. We got more good day Columbia yeah. on the way. Stay with us. Thanks. <laughs> Whether you know it or not, you got a comma behind your name. What comes next? Do you shine? With a good attitude and a good sense of humor, what can you do? What can you achieve in life? Don't let people define who you are. Every single one of you in here needs to be the best person you were created to be. Don't ever, ever, ever let anyone rain on your parade, your life. Live it and live it well.